Chef Scott is known to be snappy, but these are some moments when he got extremely mad. And in this service, when Hell's Kitchen was hosting a special moment, one contestant screwed up so bad that Chef Scott went ballistic on him. Can't even put it on a pan, you goddamn slob! Sue Chef Scott could only be described as entertaining. He's lost his cool several times on the show, and it would be an understatement to say that his reactions are over the top or even funny. But Chef Scott just tries to do his job, so when things get messed up, he just doesn't want to hold back. Something similar happened in the fourth episode of season 8, which was an Italian-themed dinner service. Chef Ramsay hoped that both teams would successfully be able to complete the dinner service. This time, the famous chef had created a very simple menu featuring shrimp scampi, grilled pork chop, chicken parmesan, and Vinnie Cardi's ravioli dish. With a menu as straightforward as this, the contestants were confident that they could pull it off smoothly. However, would things really go according to plan? Well, I don't really want to get my hopes up, but let's see what happens. So when the blue team received their first order, Russell Cook, who was handling the appetizers, got his team off to a really strong start. Meanwhile, one of the blue diners had something really special planned for the night, a proposal. <laughs> wow, how many times have you seen that happen on Hell's Kitchen? Chef Ramsay wanted to make sure that everything went perfectly for the couple, but of course, it all depended on the blue team's performance. Would the night end on a good note for the newly engaged couple? I really hope so. Anyway, the blue team was in a pretty good position thanks to Russell's deft hands. But it didn't take very long for things to take a turn for the worse. When the team moved on to the entrees, Luis Rapucci's salmon came out stone cold and this left Chef Ramsay annoyed. Unbelievable. Salmon stone cold, fucking no chance. This chef better get his act together because Chef Ramsay was gonna chew him out. But it looks like it just wasn't his day. When Louise brought the pork chop order out, he realized that he had failed to get another one ready. Louise then hurried to fix it, but ended up charring the hell out of it. When the famous chef found burnt meat on the counter, he was in utter disbelief. He was so shocked that he had to double team with Chef Scott. Is that how we shot him how to cook the pork? Not at all. One hour into the service, Louise's poor performance on the grill station left their diners hungry. And sadly, this also included the proposal table. The team was struggling with their entrees, and the proposal table still hadn't received their order. How long would they have to wait on their special night? When James sensed the tension, he walked up to Chef Ramsay to update him about the situation, and this made Ramsay furious. He's trying to propose to his future fiance. Chef. Move, Louis! Luis was already crumbling under the pressure of serving the proposal table, but things just got worse. Because, well, when he sliced his pork, it turned out to be pink. Now, this can't be good for him. But he made it far worse when he walked up to sous chef Scott holding the meat in his bare hands. Seeing this, Chef Scott lost it. You gonna walk around with a pork chop Sorry, in your chef. hands like that? Get it in the fucking oven! But he wasn't done yet. Scott was so pissed that he also said this. Walk around like a pig, what kind of slob are you? Seeing the commotion in the kitchen, Chef Ramsay was extremely frustrated with the blue team and he made them understand it loud and clear. Get a grip! Yes, Chef. Oh, fuck. The blue team headed back to their stations to get their acts together, but one contestant tried to act smart. Boris Polshuk, instead of helping his teammates with finishing the order, decided to clean the dishes. Was that really what needed to be done? Absolutely not. And sadly for him, Chef Ramsay happened to see him. As you could guess, this man wasn't happy about it. Come here, you! You wanna wash pants? Get down there! Fuck off, will you, yeah? Meanwhile, James was back at it again. And this time, he came to remind Chef Ramsay of the proposal table, who were waiting forever for their order. But what could Ramsay actually have done? The blue kitchen was a mess. Louis screwed up one more time when he brought the chicken parmesan to the pass, since it was raw. Chef Ramsay had given enough chances to Louis, and he was so fed up with him that this is what he decided to do. Get out! Get out! With Louis out of the kitchen, Chef Ramsay assigned Vinnie Accardi to the station. And finally, the proposal table received their food. Well, I really hope it was worth the wait. In the meantime, the red team, who had a pretty rough start, had managed to catch up and finish their orders well before the time ran out. They were then sent over to the blue kitchen to help them finish the rest of their tickets. However, that doesn't mean Chef Ramsay was happy with the red team. Both teams were so confused with the orders that Chef Ramsay could only think of one solution. Get out! We'll cook. Get out! Yep, Ramsay kicked both teams out of the kitchen. And this meant that sous chef Scott and sous chef Andy had to finish up the service all by themselves. 
Despite everything that went down, Chef Ramsay was able to make the proposal table a success. And well, this has to be one of the most special moments to have ever been captured on Hell's Kitchen. But in this next service, one contestant got so carried away that he threatened to do something very awful to Chef Scott. Think you're gonna do my fucking job on leave right now? Do you really think Scott was gonna sit back and take it easy though? Well, what he did will leave you in shock. In the 12th episode of season 7, the final five were ready for their second Black Jacket dinner service. Since Chef Ramsay wanted to see some communication, the best way to test this was to switch the stations midway. As the team received their first order, Jason Ellis worked on the scallops, while Jay Santos worked on the cappellini. When they sent their respective dishes to the pass, Jay's cappellini was accepted, but Jason's scallops were rejected. That's because only one portion was cooked perfectly, while the other was overcooked. Jason was finally able to get his second attempt accepted, just in time for Chef Ramsay to announce the first station switch. Ramsay was happy to see that the final five did communicate pretty well with each other. When Jason came to the meat station, Holly Ugal told him about the Wellington being in the oven for 18 minutes. So Jason called 45 seconds on the Wellingtons, but when he sliced it, it came out raw. 18 minutes in the oven and it was still raw? Damn, what kind of beef was that? Anyway, Jason then decided to put the Wellington back in the oven without telling anyone. Where did the communication go? Not a very smart move, Jason. When Chef Ramsay learned about the slip-up, he berated Jason by saying this. The minute you cut them, Jason, yes, I'm not ready. You've got to tell me. We stop everybody else, Jason. 45 minutes into the service, despite Jason's problems, the entrees were going out at a good pace. Everyone was pumped up and determined to give a good service. But when Benjamin Knack sent his tuna to the pass, it came out overcooked and this pissed off Chef Ramsay. Is that how you presented the fucking tuna? No, Chef. Come on, Benjamin, you've got to pull it back. With the team falling behind with orders, the diners at the front were growing restless. That's when the second switch happened. Would this switch help them give a better service? Jay ruined everyone's hopes when he sent an overcooked John Dory to the pass. And Chef Ramsay berated him for it. Yeah, I don't want any butter in the fucking Dory. I just want it nicely fucking sautéed. Now it's time to fucking bounce back a little bit. Then, when Jason tried to communicate with Jay for no reason at all, Jay went silent. Jason repeatedly tried to get Jay's attention, and seeing this, Chef Ramsay was dismayed. One simple task, switch sections, and we all fucking start sinking. It was now time for the third switch. By now, Jay had totally lost his footing. When Ramsay called the next ticket, Jay was a confused mess. Later on, when Autumn Lewis asked Jay for the timing on the tuna, instead of saying the time, he repeated the order. What was wrong with him? This left both Chef Ramsay and Autumn dismayed. Two halibut. No, that's not the order of the tickets. Eventually, Autumn and Jay got their timings right. And just when you thought things would get better, the worst thing happened. The Wellingtons were overcooked. As Jay worked on the refire, he called out that it would take 14 minutes. However, when Jay sent his Wellingtons to the pass, Holly wasn't ready with the garnishes since Jay had previously called 14 minutes. Chef Ramsay was getting frustrated with the wait and furiously asked Holly for the garnishes, but she still wasn't ready. Ramsay knew very well who the culprit was, so he asked Jay this. Are you doing this to make yourself look good? No, Chef. So why can't you talk to a refire coming? Damn, the momentum of the service was dropping with every station switch. So would the fourth switch help turn things around? I don't see that happening, but you'll be surprised to see what truly went down. Anyway, when the force switch finally happened, Autumn wasn't content with Jay's half-baked information. She had no idea where the Wellingtons were and what temperature was needed. However, Autumn got lucky when her Wellingtons turned out to be perfectly cooked. Meanwhile, Holly got her scallops accepted, but Benjamin stormed in to cook a bunch of scallops, and this annoyed Holly. I mean, what's with the intrusion? Holly was doing perfectly fine by herself. I guess Benjamin was just trying to act smart. However, when he sent his scallops to the pass, they were rejected for having a sear, and this made Chef Ramsay annoyed. Can I have a proper roasted scallop with a bit of respect and a bit of care? Whatever Benjamin tried to pull, it clearly wasn't working for him. Benjamin then got his refire accepted, and that's when the last and final switch happened. As the entrees were being served at a good pace, a halibut dish came back for being overcooked. Jason's face was smeared with guilt, and it only took one look for Chef Ramsay to understand whose fault it really was. Jason, that was you. Put another one on. No, hey look, they don't want another one. At this point, the team's communication was non-existent. When Jason sent his tuna to the pass, Benjamin wasn't ready with the garnishes, and this irritated Chef Ramsay. Oh, just talk to me, Benjamin. I'll have a garnish, Chef. 
put it down! Meanwhile, sous chef Scott took over the hot plate, which meant that he was now in charge of the kitchen. Chef Scott had been watching the drama unfold the entire time, but was a silent spectator. But when Benjamin tried to steal his job, Chef Scott rained down his fury over him. Do you think for one minute you're gonna start fucking running this past? Sue Chef Scott then demanded to know if Benjamin was trying to take his position in the kitchen. And when Benjamin answered no, Chef Scott lost every bit of composure that he had. Now get the fuck over there and don't ever come up to my path! You got it! Yes, Chef! Get over there! Ever seen Scott this angry before? If you thought that was crazy, then wait till you see what happened in this next service when one contestant accidentally chose the wrong opponent. If only he knew how it was gonna go down. No, it's not no you didn't, so it's the fish's fault again. In the fourth episode of season 9, Hell's Kitchen hosted two VIPs. That being Misty Mae Trainer and Jen Kessie, served by the red team, and Mark Spitz, as well as Janet Evans, served by the blue team. With the VIPs' presence, the pressure was intense for both teams. Chef Ramsay assigned Krupa Patel from the red team and Jonathan Plumley from the blue team to host the VIPs. This service was heated right from the beginning. In the blue kitchen, Tommy Stevens delivered the Caesar salad to the chef's table, but it turned out to be overdressed. As a result, Jonathan got pissed with Tommy's mistake. But instead of keeping it for later, Jonathan aggressively threw the salad in the bin. And you know how Chef Ramsay doesn't like wasted food. He was so furious about it that he did this. Come here, I'm pissed off, I'll just throw it in the trash. So yes. seven set our Caesar salad was right. Brown. That was a very unprofessional move, Jonathan. An hour into the service, the blue team was sending out appetizers at a good pace, mostly because of Natalie Blake's leadership. However, this wouldn't last for very long. Their momentum took a dip when Monterey Keys revealed that his sea bass had fallen apart. Chef Ramsay became annoyed and asked sous chef Scott to teach Monterey how to scoop the fish out properly. Instead of just being quiet and appreciating the help, Monterey decided to talk back. Chef Scott was trying his very best to keep his cool, but when Monterey showed no signs of shutting up, Scott became furious. You gotta fucking lie to my face and tell me there's nothing you can do! Monterey didn't like how sous chef Scott yelled at him and tried to interrupt him while talking, which made chef Scott even angrier. I understand. Do you? Then fucking do it! Then do it! The two finally put an end to their argument, but in the most abnormal way possible. Fuck you! Well, fuck you too then! This argument had kind of ruined the atmosphere in the kitchen. And, well, it continued when Monterey asked Jonathan for some help. Surprisingly, Jonathan, who was usually the first person to offer some help, declined to help Monterey and asked him to do it himself. And this led to a full on brawl. Fuck a desserts, you man, the fuck up. Oh, man. Time to yell at each other, but God, not time God, to cook. God. God, why does everyone end up arguing like that right in the middle of the service? The diners were mostly here for the amazing food not to be disturbed. Anyway, Monterey ended up working on his dish by himself and finally got his second attempt accepted. But it was now time for the chef's table. Will Lustberg was ready with his garnishes, but Chino Chang wasn't ready with his Wellingtons. Chino had already called out one minute, but when sous chef Scott asked for a time, Chino changed it to three minutes. And well, this made Scott annoyed. Several embarrassing mistakes later, Chef Ramsay was left with only one thing left to do. Hold of you! Fuck off out of it! Things weren't any better in the red kitchen as well. So once again, sous chef Andy, sous chef Scott, and Chef Ramsay had to serve the chef's table. Now, what did Chef Ramsay think about the overall service? Pathetic! Anyway, in this next service, things got so out of control that Chef Ramsay actually had to rub his eyes to believe what was happening. Right now, you don't stand over here and scream. I'm the one that's waiting for food. But guess who stepped in to save the day? This is the most unexpected turn of events ever in the show's history. The 11th episode of season 8 was the first Black Jacket dinner service, and special guests Namar Garchapera and Mia Hamm dined in at Hell's Kitchen. There was a table side steak which was served by Nana Sively for the night. Now, this was gonna be an interesting service since two of the most argumentative contestants were working together at the same station. That being Sabrina Brimhall and Trev McGrath. Even before the service started, the two were already at each other's necks. And when Sabrina sent the first risotto to the pass, it was rejected. That is cooked as fuck. And that there, fried risotto. Then Gail Novonario brought her scallops to the pass, but they were rejected as well for having no color at all. Not an impressive start by any means. But Trev was confident that he would be able to give a better performance. However, his lobster spaghetti was also rejected for being overcooked. Pasta's overcooked and it's stewed! 
disgusting. With no food out in the dining room, a war with timing started between Sabrina and Trev. Sabrina asked Trev for the timing on the spaghetti, and he yelled back four minutes. She then asked if the spaghetti would cook in four minutes, and he yelled at her by saying, Trev. There's pasta in the back! Stop yelling! What's with all the agitation, huh? Everyone was here to do a job, and it would only make things a bit better if they communicated well and worked as a team. When Chef Scott saw the two pissing each other off, he went straight to Trev and interrupted him by saying this. Mouth right now. Jeff Scott then had a valid point to make when he screamed right into Trev's face by saying, I'm the one that's waiting for food from you. Get your sh together and cook a pasta. Chef Ramsay was sick and tired of the lack of teamwork from the Black Jackets. It was just way too frustrating. And to make things worse, the contestants weren't even taking the criticism well. Take a look at what Trev had to say about his fiery encounter with Chef Scott. All you want to do is berate me, belittle me, piss off. Well, thankfully Chef Scott didn't hear this since it would have been an entirely different story. The broken teamwork caused a backlog of orders, causing the diners to grow impatient. With only three tickets of appetizers left, Chef Ramsay moved the team onto the entrees to gain some lost momentum. But unfortunately, the opposite happened. When Gail's halibut got stuck to the pan, Chef Ramsay became furious. It's like a sabotage. Nothing coming out. Was everyone trying to test poor Chef Ramsay's patience? It definitely looked like it. One hour and 15 minutes into the service, no food had left the kitchen. Nana had to make sure that her timing matched with her teams, and the only hope was that they didn't screw up. Thankfully, Gail got her salmon accepted, and the entrees left the kitchen. However, this didn't mean that everything had fallen into place. When Russell Cook sent up some raw Wellingtons, Chef Ramsay was fed up. You've got your hands full out there, and you're screwing me! Work as a fucking team! Ramsay warned them that the next mistake would send all of them packing to their dorms. And, well, Chef Ramsay kept his word when Russell sent a raw ribeye out. I cannot do this any fucking more! The famous chef was so pissed that he couldn't stop himself from screaming out the same thing over and over again. Get out! Yeah, that's right, get out! Get out! So, guess who finished the service? Well, it fell back on the shoulders of the ever-present and talented sous chefs. So, these were the times when Chef Scott got super angry on Hell's Kitchen. But, who knows, there may be more times when Scott rages at contestants in the future. I guess we'll have to sit back, wait, and see.